What is up you guys, it's James with James Chip Tiles. If you can't tell, me and my girlfriend just got done bleach tie-dyeing some shirts. Um, I did I did my black hat too, I just had a plain black hat so I did it too. Could have done socks, didn't think about it. Did some black pants, they turned like gray with some weird bronze. I don't know, didn't work out well with the pants, but it uh, looks cool. We definitely had some fun, I've tie-dyed before and it was definitely uh, fun. But nevertheless, we're going to jump into today's video. But first... I just want to thank my geckos. As soon as I clean the glass, they're just a nice big poop all the way down. You know, they love me, I love them type deal, right? So today we're going to be talking about leopard gecko genetics. Um, I... Mustache hair. The mustache is getting really long. I spent the last 20 minutes getting geckos ready, and then I realized I know Photoshop, and I can just Google the images I want, Photoshop them, and put them on screen just like this. Or like that. So, I put all my geckos away. Um, I didn't want to mix anything up. It is breeding season. I don't want to accidentally put males with females and who knows what might happen, right? So, I'm going to preface this by saying this is going to be part one. Any questions that come up in the next week, let's let's say I do a part two next week. Um, any questions anyone has in the next week, leave them in the comments um, and I'll do a part two. And it'll just be kind of an ongoing series. But today I want to talk about just kind of an overall uh, genetics. If you have no idea anything about genetics, you know, first I recommend getting a notepad and a pen. Because this is what I did is I actually had notes down and I actually had someone rewrite them and I photocopied them. And I believe there's a picture saved in my phone. Um, but to, to start, to finally get to the start, right, we're like how many minutes in now? Um, there are three main kinds of genes, and before I even get into that, I have to preface this too. I'm going to be talking in layman's terms, so if anyone knows what I'm talking about, I'm going to, not not that anyone's dumb, but I'm going to dumb it down for you guys, just because it's a lot of information, and it's a lot of stuff that if you're not used to, it's going to sound confusing, and you're going to get lost, and that's just the way it is. So, there are three main uh, types of genes at play here. There's There's recessive. A few examples, uh, albino and patternless. There's incomplete dominant, which uh, an example would be snow, which makes super snow, max snow, of course. And then there's co-dominant, which an example of that would be tug snow. Um, so let's start with recessive. So there's a whole list of recessive genes, and I'm talking primarily in leopard geckos. Um, to list a few, there's three strains of albino which do not mix because you won't be able to tell the difference. Um, if you breed two together, you'll get normal babies that are het for both. And if you try to prove out the hets, you won't be able to tell the difference. So it's a general consensus of everybody everywhere who's ever tried to breed leopard geckos that you don't mix them. And there's still people that are gonna do it. And that's fine. If you end up doing it on accident, just make sure the people you're just selling to know that and that they buy it presumably as a pet which drives the value down yes but you're saving the hobby in itself for a couple dollars um so there's tremper albino which was the first one ron tremper um there's uh not rainwater bell albino um and then there's rainwater albino which is also called las vegas it's, there's a lot of controversy between that one just because the guy who made it isn't necessarily the nicest guy um other recessive genes are Eclipse, which are really cool. They kind of piebald in leopard geckos, and they make the eyes almost uh, solid black or red if it's an albino eclipse. Albino eclipses also have their own names. Uh, the Trimper version is a raptor. The Bell version is a radar. And the uh, Rainwater version is a typhoon, I believe. That might be... Typhoon might have something else in it, but I'm pretty sure it's a typhoon. Other recessives include... Patternless, Eclipse, Blizzard, possibly Giant, um, and I think that's about it. I have my list right here. Uh, I just pulled it up real quick. But the way recessives work is you have a random animal pop out that's a visual, right? It's whatever. It's the first albino, so let's say. Um, you take that albino and you breed it to a normal because that's all you have um, and you want to prove it out. Uh, and then you... All the babies that come out of that are going to be 100% het, right? 
So they have the, the, let's say the dad was albino. The dad is a visual of a recessive gene, so he has two copies. So when you breed it to the mom, all the babies are forced to get at least one of those copies. And since the mom has zero, they're, they're just getting one, so they're hex. So they're non-visual, but they carry the gene. So if you breed the babies back to the dad, dad's got two copies, babies have one copy, he's albino, they're you know not visual. Um, he, when they have babies, that is automatically gonna pass his one down, so half the ba- so all the babies are absolutely het, 100% het. And then his daughter that he bred back to, she's got one copy, so she's gonna pass her one copy 50% of the time. So 50% of the babies are gonna be het, and 50% are gonna have both copies, and they're gonna show a visual albino. And there are all sorts of ways to get mixed up in there with pos heads and even double pos heads and all different percentages. And it gets really convolute, convoluted. I try to, I absolutely stay away from pos heads. If I see something pop up in my collection that I know, I didn't know was gonna be popping up, if it's, especially if it's recessive, I just halt the, halt the whole production. Um, I have to reevaluate everything. I, you know, consider selling uh, the whole project off, honestly, because I just like pure clean lines that I know it's going to come out and I know uh, everything that's going to happen. So those are recessives explained. Again, any questions at all, leave them in the comments and we'll make a part two. Um, so next, I, said, I think is incomplete dominant. I was I was wrong. Uh, I misread what I wrote. I was just I wasn't thinking clearly. Um, Giant and Godzilla Giant aren't actually uh, recessives. That's uh, my mistake. Uh, but they are incomplete dominant. So we have Giant. We have we have Giant. We have Max Snow. And I want to say that's that's about it, honestly. So the way incomplete dominants work, and the wording's kind of weird on this, but for simplicity's sake we're just gonna say incomplete dominant um the way it works is the same thing one copy and two copies just like we just talked about recesses right so if it has two copies it's a visual so if you have a if you have a gecko that has two copies of max snow it's a visual what we actually call a super snow and if it has one copy where if you were talking about recessive genes it would be het because it has one copy and it would look normal but in terms of incomplete dominant imagine this is your het the one copy is your head, it just shows a little something, right? So if you have one gene, you're not normal, but you're not super snow, you're just a snow. And if you happen to have both genes, you end up being a super snow. And it passes along the same way, uh, except, you know, you can tell if something has one copy because it's visual, it's, it's obvious. Um, and if it has two copies, it's always gonna pass one down, just like before. Now, there's a lot of debate with giants and all that, how that works, because giants, the premise behind it's very weird. Um, a lot of companies will just weigh the geckos periodically, and if it's an adult and it's so many grams, it's considered an, a giant A giant if it's from a certain line. And if it's, you know, 110 grams, it's a Godzilla giant, depending on the sex, and, you know, it, it has to be from a certain line, and all this and that, but some geckos are, too, are even bigger, and some geckos are even smaller. Even if they're not from the line, if they are, it's kind of, it's weird, it's complicated, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, snows, Max Snows are really the big one there. Um, tug Snows are a little bit, you can mix them with Max Snows, but you really shouldn't. I made that mistake this year, I think I've talked about that in videos before, if anyone knows. Um, I'm selling them as pets only, I'm selling them less than uh, the retail value of Snows and Super Snows alike. Uh, just because they could be a mix and it's impossible to tell and I take that responsibility, you know, I take that very seriously uh, It's just something I want to avoid doing and it keeps your name clear if anything ever comes up At least you know what you did was right and you can back that with evidence So next we have uh, co-dominant um, Which are genes like tug snows one copy of the gene is a visual tug snow if you Zero, zero is a normal, one's a visual tug snow. If you breed two visual tug snows together, whether they have, whether they come out with zero, they're normals. If they come out with one gene, they're tug snow. But if they, you know, catch both, uh, both copies of the tug snow gene, they're still just a tug snow. 
the way it works is if they catch both copies, they still look the same as a regular tug snow, but genetically speaking, they will 100% pass the tug snow gene down. So they might all look the same, but the ones carrying the, the both two strains of the gene are actually worth more. If you think about it, you'd have to prove them out and it's a whole process. But if you can uh, accurately produce snows and you know snows are worth a little bit more than normals, if you can accurately produce those, then you're better off having an uh, animal with two copies uh, as opposed to one because instead of a 50-50 chance of the baby getting that copy of the gene, it's a 100% chance because they're gonna get one no matter what. So one category I did forget to mention at the beginning is actually line bread traits. And there's a whole slew of them. I'm just gonna list the ones that, you know, I worked with at my job and I wrote down, but if you go to anyone's website and you don't understand something, and it looks like a gecko you've never seen before, it's probably a line bread trait. Let me uh, list them all off. Let me list them all off for you. We have jungle or stripe or bold stripe. Um, Oh, one I didn't talk about for codominant is Enigma. Enigma can be its own separate video. I don't want to talk about that right now. Um, sun glows, bloods, carrot tails, carrot bodies, carrot heads, um, rainbows. Uh, there's all sorts of wild caught lines, which are its own video too. I don't want to talk about that. Uh, pastels, Dalmatians, red Dalmatians, hypotangerines, super hypotangerines, Hypos, tangerine tornadoes, um, stripes, red stripes, lavender stripes, tangerines, bandits, um, Halloween masks, black knights even, and I have one. Um, super bloods, uh, a couple other genes I forgot to mention before, lemon frost, that can be its own video. That, I'll do a video of lemon frost and enigma together if you know why it's obvious, but all those line bread traits that I just mentioned, I really where you start to see your oranges um, along with any other color like the black for black knights and there's black pearl and there's all sorts of black lines but it's mostly the oranges and you know the stripes and all the uh, pattern uh, we start to see more pattern um, and basically what those genes are is just someone took you know someone had their warehouse full of geckos and they looked at the normals and they said well this one's kind of orange and this one's kind of orange so they breed them together and they hatch 20 babies and they say well these two babies are really orange and they just take those babies and bring it back together and they eventually go down the line and they just get orange and orange and orange and then they start selling it as like a tangerine line or something right and the way this works in terms of uh you know inbreeding is with reptiles reptiles are genetically a lot more prone to mutation that's why we see a lot of genes in them when we breed them we've seen albinos in humans and there's how many millions of billions, like eight billion humans, right? And we've seen albino, we might've seen some other genes, but you know, there's not that many leopard geckos and we have how many genes going around? The reason is reptiles are just generally more likely to mutate. They've been around for forever. They're gonna be around after us. It's because they're adaptive and they're able to change a lot faster. Um, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, inbreeding they're also less likely to be affected by inbreeding. Inbreeding causes a lot of things like spinal kinks and tail kinks. And I know a lot of people argue that's just your incubator. In my personal opinion, it can be a mix. If your incubator varies, you can get tail kinks and back kinks. If you're inbreeding, you can get tail kinks and back kinks. You can also get all sorts of other slew of things. I've seen eye crinkles. I've seen, you know, geckos that are prone to shedding issues and they end up losing toes. That's genetic. All sorts of other things. Black knights are prone to being tiny. Uh, blizzards are prone to being, you know, really aggressive. It's all line bred. Um, it's all from inbreeding. But if you outcross enough, which is the act of bringing in new blood into your line breeding, um, you can still get your awesome orange tangerine line bred colors uh, without uh, having to sacrifice, you know, the gene pool. Uh, so yeah that's that's kind of it i'm just looking at my list that's gonna be it for today's video it's already like 15 plus minutes long um and i don't know if i put pictures of everything on screen that's kind of a lot of work and i want this video to go up tomorrow uh, but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed it make sure to like comment subscribe all that definitely helps with the channel we're at 95 subscribers 
which is awesome. I mean, I've been doing videos for over a year. I've got so many, so many videos on my channel and to finally be, pardon me, to finally be getting the ball rolling. It's just awesome. I'm just out here wanting to educate everybody, wanting to, you know, take care of my animals. You know, that's the dream, right? Full time. If I can make money selling them and make a little bit off of YouTube and just take care of them full time, I'd be a happy camper. So make sure to hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, James Jeptiles, at gmail.com if you have any questions. And remember, if you need any clarification, you want me to talk about anything, leave in the comments. Next week, we'll do a part two. So nevertheless, have a good one and have a good one.